Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. Thank you very much for your kindness and for your love, for your goodness and for your mercies which are new to us every single day. Behold, it's a wonderful day that you've given to us, that we can worship you and that we may be able to draw near to you. Thank you for an opportunity to look into your word. As we share a little from this word, I pray that your presence may abide with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise be to the living God. It's a wonderful thing to come before you with the word of God this morning and just to share what the Lord has put in my heart. And I thank him so much for he is a faithful God. There is no one like him. Indeed, he's a wonderful God and he loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. And it is his desire that we may commune with him, sharing with him every little thing that we go through in this life. And I thank him because he's given us an avenue, an avenue for prayer, that we can connect with him and share all things. I tell you, there are so many things that we cannot share with our friends. And sometimes we end up just, you know, putting things in our heart with a lot of pressure when the Lord has already provided for us a way out and his doors are open so that we can come and just share with him that which he has put in our heart. And so this morning, I would like us just to share something very small on the topic of prayer. And I pray that the Lord will be able to speak to you and speak to me as well so that we can know what it means to pray. There's a time that I read this and I, it, it, it sort of um, just changed my perspective completely about prayer. And in the spirit of prophecy, it was saying that when we are praying, we pray not that we can manipulate God, but we pray that the Lord may work in us that he may change us, that we may be able to draw to him closer and not him to us because he doesn't run away from his children. It is our sins that have made us to be so far distant from our God. And so as we pray, it is for our own benefit that our lives may be transformed by that prayer. We may, be able to, we may also be able to listen to what the Lord has for us. And as we do so, he's able to convict us, change us, and our mind and our all be like that of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, now verse 7, which is my focus for today, listen to what it says. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard, for they are much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for there, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. And then thereafter immediately he taught the disciples how to pray. That is where the prayer that is so common, our father who art in heaven, was given to the disciples. And so it is saying that when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. They were using vain repetitions and they looked upon those prayers as having in themselves the merit to atone for sin. The prayer in itself can be said so eloquently. It can be said so perfectly. It can be structured so well, but it cannot remove sin from our heart. There's something so special that the Lord is looking for in us when we are praying. And um, hence, the longer the prayer, the greater the merit. People imagine that. It is not in the length of prayer. You can pray just in, you know, two to three words and the Lord will still hear that prayer. It doesn't have to be five minutes. It doesn't have to be 10 minutes. And when, for example, when Peter was sinking in that water, all he cried out to the Savior was, Lord, save me. And those are only three words, and the Lord was able to come through for him and save him. And so what the Lord is looking for is not in the number of words, is not in how long the prayer is, it is not in how eloquent that prayer is, it is not that it is imagined that because we have made a prayer, we've gone down on our knees, 
then that prayer is heard. There is a lot to it that the Lord is looking for in that prayer. And the moment we get to know that, it will be so, so, so important for us. And we will look at prayer completely differently because prayer is meant to work also in me so that it changes me that I become like the, my character becomes like the character of Jesus Christ, that I'm allowing myself to be convicted by the Lord. I'm allowing myself to be changed by the Lord. I'm allowing myself surrendering so that the spirit of the Lord can work inside of me and make me to be like Jesus Christ. What the Pharisees were doing in the days of old can still be seen in the lives of children today. They used to make long prayers and they were very repetitive in the statements that they were making. It is like prayer had become like a cliche, like there are certain words that you must say in that prayer for it to be meaningful. There's a way that that prayer needs to move for it to be meaningful. And then it's just making prayer like a routine thing. And it is not something that is coming from the heart of the person who's praying. And so the repetitions that were there is not uncommon even in the children of God today, that many people go before the Lord and just say what they want to say without necessarily looking at their motive behind it. It is actually making a presentation before people. Let us be aware that the Lord is not looking for a mere presentation. The Lord is looking for a broken heart. A broken spirit is what he's looking for. A contrite heart and a broken spirit. That is what our God is looking for when we go to him in prayer. In that prayer of our Father who art in heaven, there are so many principles that can be learned in it. When the Lord is teaching us how to pray, it's not always that we go and just make mere repetitions of that prayer that the Lord gave. He was teaching them how to pray. But again, when you go to the book of John chapter 17, where the Lord now was giving his prayer, and as he was living, he was talking to the disciples, and that prayer was relevant not only to the disciples, but even those people who would live thereafter, up to the end of time. That is you and me. And that prayer did not necessarily take the format of the prayer that was given in Matthew chapter 6. And so the Lord is teaching us principles on how we go before him when we are praying. And so it is not just about self-expiation. It is not a show off. It's not a mere display. Prayer is something that should be emanating deep from the heart. And so the Lord is telling us that when the heart feels no need of God, then that prayer is not acceptable before God. Sometimes I know somebody can just be chosen in the midst of a group and be told to pray, and your heart is not ready for prayer at all. And yet also at the same time, you can find in such a group, you can be there many people, but the Spirit of the Lord just drives you to somebody, and you can actually tell that somebody else also thought that so-and-so is the one who's got to pray. That is the leading of the Holy Spirit. And when we are in such a situation then we know the spirit of the lord is on leading and knowing the heart of that person he is going to do it right from the heart and so the lord is calling upon every one of us that when we go before him to pray let us pray deep from the heart and not make mere presentation before god and before man and um there must be a need a feeling of the need for god inside of your heart and it is only when you feel that need that you'll be able to express it to the creator of the universe, the king of kings, the lord of lords, and the great I am. He is looking for that kind of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And if you are just doing those vain repetitions, it is going to be like the heathen do and even what the Pharisees would be doing. So prayer is not an expiation for sin. It has no virtue or merit of itself. Prayer of itself on its own right does not have any virtue. The virtue is gotten in that prayer when it is emanating from the heart and the heart is poured out before the Lord from a soul that is believing, a soul that knows that who God is and knows that there is only one true God and he has a son who's called Jesus Christ and you worshiping the true God with all your heart, surrendering to him. That prayer, the Lord for sure, is going to hear it. All the flowery words at our command are not equivalent to one holy desire. We can have very flowery words around our prayer. We can have such language that, you know, 
like just strikes the people that are hearing that prayer. But if it is not coming from the heart, it is meaningless. Those flowery words are actually just meaningless before the Lord. The most eloquent prayers are but idle words if they do not express the true sentiments of the heart. And so, brothers and sisters, what I'm learning from this, don't go on your knees and start praying if your heart is not ready. It is better that you don't even pray than when you know you're just going to make, you know, some vain repetitions and just, you know, do something that really is not coming down from the depth of your heart. That prayer will be almost like an abomination before the Lord. And so it is calling, it is calling for every child of God to be ready when you want to pray. Be, bring yourself before the Lord. Ask yourself, ask the Lord Jesus to guide you. But his spirit is going to be able to guide you to how you should pray, depending on even the situation that is at hand that is calling for prayer. When you express really what you want in very simple words, you know, out from your heart, just the way you would talk to a friend, just imagine that you've gone to your very best friend and you want to tell them the experience that you are having. You want to tell them that, you know, this is what I've been through in the past week and I really feel awful about this. I feel very good about this situation. That is the kind of conversation that the Lord wants us to have with him when we are making a prayer before him. Then just imagine how you're talking to the creator of the universe, the one who is able to make something from nothing. Sometimes we take too long with compliments, you know, telling God how good he is, yet these are only words that have been framed, that we're just pouring them out before the Lord, but they are really not emanating from the heart. It is needless for us to cram a prayer. It is important that when we come in before the Lord, tell him what is in the heart at that point in time. Remind him about what his word has said concerning that situation. Acknowledge his sovereignty. Yes, that is so important because our God is a sovereign God and he is almighty. He is greater. But let the spirit of the Lord be the one to guide you. When you're going before the Lord and maybe you're crying to the Lord because of something that is troubling you or a sin that you're trying to overcome, the Lord knows your heart cry and just tell it to him. Don't try to sugarcoat anything before God. Don't try to make it look better before God because he knows it even better than you can ever express it before him. But just lay it bare. And that is why I like the book of uh, Psalms, the way David would just open up his heart and just lay bare everything in his heart before the Lord. That is the kind of openness that the Lord is looking for in you and I. And so I would like to read something, a statement from the book of uh, uh, Testimonies, volume 2, page 580 and paragraph 3. Allow me to read this. And it is saying that when Christ taught the people, he did not devote the time to prayer. He did not enforce upon them as he did Pharisees, long, tedious ceremonies of, and prayers. He taught his disciples, disciples how to pray. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner pray ye. And then now that is when he gave the prayer of our Father who art in heaven. But also remember that Christ would take off time, go in the night in the mountains, and he would spend time communing with his father. And that communion was not necessarily being on your knees the whole night talking in prayer. You would pray, you read the word, you converse with God, you read the word. And I believe that is what it meant when he went, even when he went to the mountains to pray. It is not being on your knees for hours and hours and hours. It is not practical. But he went to commune with the Lord, reading the word, reading the scriptures, listening to the Lord speaking 
to you and not praying one way all the time. Many of us, I believe, we know what it means. Many times we just go before the Lord and we just have a whole, whole list of things that we want to present before the Lord. But we live there without listening to what the Lord is telling us. And so when we are praying, let us give time not to get up so quickly and run away from where we are praying, but give time so that the Lord can also speak to you and tell you what it is that he wants you to do. And that requires a little lingering in between prayer sometimes when you're praying alone and also after you are through, just linger on and let the Lord impress your mind with what he wants, to, he wants you to do. Another thing that I would like to read is on the book Prayer. Prayer, page 265, paragraph 4. Okay. There are two kinds of prayer. The prayer of form and the prayer of faith. The repetition of said customary phrases when the heart feels no need of God is formal prayer. We should be extremely careful in all our prayers to speak the words of the heart and to say only what we mean. All the flowery words at our command are not equivalent to one holy desire. The most eloquent prayers are but vain repetitions if they do not express the true sentiments of the heart. But the prayer that comes from an honest heart when the simple wants of the soul are expressed just as we would ask the earthly friend for a favor expecting what it would be granted expecting that it would be granted. This is the prayer of faith. The publican, and this is the statement that I was looking for, the publican who went up to the temple to pray is a good example of a sincere devoted worshiper. He felt that he was a sinner and his great need led to an outburst of passionate desire. God, be merciful to me a sinner. That was a prayer of that publican. And what I love about our God is that he's able to read the heart to the depth of it. So you don't even have to, to you know, like, you know, lie to the Lord in any way. The Lord already knows what you want before you ask him. And so when we go to the Lord to ask, it is not that he doesn't know. He already knows. He's just looking for us, you know, to commune with him, to have a chat with him. That if you have something in your heart that you want to take to the Lord, please do so. And with a lot of meaning and a lot of sincerity from your heart, may you present it before the Lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart according to his will. One last thing, very important. Who, who are you worshipping? Are you worshipping the true God of heaven or are you worshipping the God of this earth? If you're worshipping the true God of heaven, the one true God that we have been told of in the book of John 17. Um, John 17 verse 1 second part says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal. This is so important. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And also when you look at the book of First John chapter 5, verse 20, allow me to run there quickly as I conclude. 1 John chapter 5 verse 20 says this, And we know that the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. It is basically talking the same thing and confirming what we have been told in the book of John chapter 17 verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 says this, just confirming the God that we should be worshipping. But, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. And so here again it is confirming that there is only one God, and that is the Father, and that he has also a son who is called here in this case, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So there is only one true God, and then there is, he has a son, and that son is called Jesus Christ. That is the God that we worship. 
That is the God of the Christians. That is the God of the people who believe in the Bible. That is the God that I would want us to uh, worship. And when we go to God in spirit and in truth and worship him, he will be able to give us the desire of our heart. Here is another case. I want us to look in the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. And this is what it is saying. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We are worshipping the God of heaven, the one Lord of heaven, the only true God and his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent to save you and to save me. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord grant you the desires of your heart as you go to him in prayer. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us this morning. Blessed be your name forever. May you have your way. May you bless every one of us who has heard this message. And may we have a transformation. May we be reformed in how we pray and how we approach you, Lord, in prayer, knowing that prayer changes us. Prayer changes us and we become like Jesus Christ when we pray because we are laid open before God and we allow him and surrender to him to change us. Thank you, Lord. May your will now be done in our lives as we continue even to study more of your word and get ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus. This is our prayer this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen.